So I want to start out giving a little bit of context, which is something I don't normally do, and it confuses people. So today, we'll, we'll start with context. Uh, we have a program called the Building Performance Partnership. It's a two years and running program. We treat it more like a pilot. We don't market it, um, and it is voluntary. Um, in this program, we ask people to provide us with their energy and water consumption data, just based off of the utility bill, so we're getting monthly readings from them through Energy Star. Um, what we're doing with that information uh, is creating a feedback loop through an annual performance report. Um, and in that performance report, we actually use um, New Buildings Institute's first view energy signature. Um, if you haven't checked that out, it's actually a really wonderful tool. Um, so energy and water, it's on our KPI list here. These are LEED's key performance indicators. Uh, transportation, water, energy, waste, and experience. We'll be talking about experience today. Um, it is one of the key performance indicators that we are not as familiar with. It's easy for us to look at source energy use intensity for whole building operational performance. And we currently are piloting feedback loop using an annual performance report to about 300 buildings. Um, that's not 300 participants. We probably have you know, about 200 individual entities um, that it will be receiving reports on the buildings that they're providing data to us for. Um, and we are fairly competent in providing feedback for energy and water for a whole building. Um, coming up, um, once we exit pilot of the reports, we'll be trying to integrate these other key performance indicators. Transportation, we'll be looking at the location of the building and some occupant survey data on how the occupants are actually getting to and from work. Um, we may be able to couple um, the methodology we use to collect that information with some of the um, investigations we're doing under our occupant experience key performance indicator. Um, the other that we'll be um, approaching later on in the coming year will be waste. Everybody treats waste differently. It's going to be difficult to come up with a common metric. Um, so we'll spend some pretty intensive time on how we want to handle that. Um, and all of this, all of the reporting that will come out of this and the feedback loops we're hoping to establish will support LEED certification. Building Performance Partnership as its own program is sort of going to fade away. And everybody who engages with USGBC will be receiving these performance feedback from us as long as they're able to provide us with the data that we need on an ongoing basis. Um, so for occupant experience, that's what we're going to dive into today. That includes occupant behavior, occupant satisfaction, and health. Um, and right now, we're looking into how we can best measure occupant experience um, through behavior. Um, and our goal with that is to develop a framework that is going to support continuous collection of data on the occupant's behavior in the built environment. Um, and that will include the relationship of the behavior on energy use in the building. Um, and one thing, again, NBI, I just love things that they do, plug loads matter. Um, I have a t-shirt from New Buildings Institute that I cut up because it's much too large. And uh, <laughs> yeah, tacked it to my desk. Plug loads matter. And that's one thing we want to get at with our occupant behavior work. We want to see what we can do in a building or a space that's already high performing. I mean, USGBC, we're going to be the guinea pigs here. Um, that's already high performing. How much more can we reduce by influencing occupant behavior? And the uh, first step we're taking is, is to pilot a strategy that we also intend to use in our office. Um, so Lonnie is going to go into what the pilot is, um, how you can use it, and then we'll go back and talk about what USGBC is doing. Thanks, Lauren. Well, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, I started working on this project, or sort of the occupant experience and behavior part of the Building Performance Partnership a little over a year ago, and unfortunately was not able to attend this symposium last year. Lauren attended with a couple of our other colleagues, so I was pretty jealous. But I'm glad that I was able to make it this year. Um, I'm really happy they were able to present and have this pilot credit ready to discuss. Um, so as Lauren mentioned, we have sort of occupant experience as one of the key metrics for the lead rating system. Um, and so our ultimate goal is that sort of dynamic collection of ongoing data around experience and behavior in LEED certified buildings. Um, so that goal is really at the top. And these, what these two arrows are essentially doing is 
highlighting where we're at right at this moment and what we're doing in the lead rating system. So we have this arrow leaning over to the left side of occupant satisfaction. So how is an occupant dealing with their lighting levels, thermal comfort, ergonomics, um, things of that nature. Uh, a lot that goes on the surveys that the Center for Built Environment or other sort of entities give out. Um, and currently we have a credit in our Lead for Existing Buildings rating system, uh, the Occupant Comfort Survey, that project teams can use during their certification process that gets at that sort of satis satisfaction uh, levels of the occupants in the building. Um, but what we have sort of on the right is this new sort of area we're exploring in the lead rating system, which is occupant behavior and how the occupants of the building are actually using their space, whether they're turning off lights when they leave a room, whether they unplug their monitors, whether they're turning their um, computers off at night. And so today we're really going to focus on this right side of occupant behavior and how we're intending to sort of include this in the lead rating system and also sort of include it in our building performance you know, programs at USGBC. Um, so again, I sort of touched on this that our focus of sort of the occupant behavior is really enabling the occupants in these lead certified spaces to perform efficient behaviors um, to sort of improve the overall performance of the building and sort of aim at getting at the sustainability goals of the building. Um, and in addition to that, really see if it's possible, and I think Lauren discussed some of this last year at the symposium of can we get some quantitative data to sort of pinpoint metrics to use when quantifying this occupant behavior? And just throwing you know, things out there, kilowatt hours per full-time employee, or you know, if we're talking about water, we have gallons per FTE. Um, so through this, you know, our work with the occupant behavior and this pilot credit, we're really trying to see if we can use that, this pilot credit and the data we get from project teams to sort of use these metrics in addition to the energy use we can get, the water use, and hopefully, you know, the waste and transportation that we're also working at, so we can get this sort of overall picture of a building's performance at any given time. So we have this ongoing collection. Um, and sort of our approach right now, and what we're going to talk about today, is this lead pilot credit we launched in early March, which is called Occupant Engagement. Um, again, the intent of the um, pilot credit is to improve the performance of the building by enabling energy efficient behavior in building occupants. And we carefully chose the word enabling um, in order to sort of get away of strictly sort of behavior change. And a lot of times when we talk to building occupants or owners, it's not that the occupants didn't necessarily have the behavior to perform these, they just didn't know how or what resources they could use or have technologies in place. So this credit is really focusing on putting those education components or the technology in place to enable those occupants to perform energy efficient behaviors. Um, before we sort of get into the requirements and a little bit more logistics of the pilot credit of occupant engagement, just want to take a step back for those that might not be familiar with what the pilot credit library is, how we actually use pilot credits in the lead rating system. Um, so to start, the lead rating system is based out of 100 points. Um, we test things like sustainable sites, um, water and energy efficiency, the materials used in a building, indoor environmental quality. Um, so that makes up the 100 point structure of a rating system. But we also have 10 bonus points that projects can earn um, by sort of attaining regional priority credits, so attempting credits that address certain issues in the project's given location. Um, and we also award points for innovation and strategies. So the pilot credit, um, if you're to attempt the document engagement or other pilot credits that we have in what we call the pilot credit library, are all worth one point and fall under the sort of that innovation bonus points um, for the lead rating system. So that's sort of a little background on how we use it. Um, pilot credits are available to any uh, LEED 2009 projects currently. Um, this credit that we're talking about today will only be available for the existing buildings rating systems. Um, it will not be available for the design and construction. Um, but all the other credits, most of them are available for multiple rating systems. And sort of to start, how does a pilot credit get created? Um, who's involved? Um, we actually have, and the first step is the credit proposed. And we actually offer user-generated pilot credits. So any of you that are interested in whatever topic it may be, whether it's another sort of occupant engagement, plug load management, or anything completely different, um, anyone can submit an idea or a credit for the pilot credit library. Um, so the credits are sort of conceived, written up, and then submitted to USGBC, and then this sort of our subject matter experts in the given territory will sort of evaluate them and see if we're already addressing that issue. And if we are, maybe we'll give it back to the person that wrote it and they can modify the requirements a little bit so they can get more particular of what we're not addressing already. So after it's sort of gone through that, we select the credits to be inputted into the credit library. 
um, and then it's available for project teams to use. Um, and the thing that I really like about the pilot credits is we're, we're extremely flexible in the requirements. Once it's out there, that doesn't mean the requirements are set in stone similar to what is in our lead rating system currently. Um, we have the ability to, based on project feedback and based from anyone you know, that submits to us or writes to us, we have the ability to change requirements, modify them a little bit to sort of get at what our intent of the credit is. Um, and so that's why I'm really excited to be here, because I'm anxious to hear what comments or feedback from those that have already sort of undergone occupant engagement programs in your organization, whether it's you know, commercial or residential, um, what that might apply to in the commercial side and how we can better um, the requirements of this credit. So I encourage you, any of you to uh, you know, come up to Laura and I at dinner, the rest of the conference, or get in touch after this about how you think we can improve this credit that we'll discuss um, in a few minutes. And so in the evolution, again, after sort of it's out there, projects that register for the credit, they use it in their projects, and unlike um, Lead Online for all the other credits, projects will submit sort of a few key components that we're, we are requiring, which I'll discuss in a few minutes, but we also ask that they answer a few questions of were the requirements clearly, you know, could you understand them? Um, were there any things you could change? So we were able to get feedback from projects in order to improve the credits. Um, and then it sort of continues on until we sort of figure out will this sort of end up getting into the actual 100-point structure of the lead rating system at some point whenever there's a sort of new update of uh, the rating system. So this is just a quick screenshot of our website, what the lead credit library looks like. Um, you can access it at usgbc.org slash pilot credit library. I think our credit actually got cut off of this screenshot, but we are a little bit above the link to the pilot credit library. Um, and you can access, you know, you can see that they're organized sort of by credit categories, um, the water credits, sustainable sites. Um, and the nice thing is that these pilot credits, even though they're one credit, they sort of link to multiple credits, especially in this occupant behavior focus on energy efficiency. If you attempt this, you're not only earning a point for this pilot credit, but you could potentially earn additional points and say the optimized energy performance credit, which is strictly based on your reduction in energy use. Um, so not only will you get one point there, you could potentially get more in that credit. So back to sort of our pilot credit and the intent and requirements behind this. Um, again, the intent is to improve the performance of the building by enabling energy efficient behavior in building occupants. And we've structured this credit to have two major components that we're asking project teams um, to comply with or utilize in their engagement programs. The first of which is a consumption feedback component. So we're asking project teams to gather energy uh, use information and convey that to the building occupants. Um, and we've structured this credit in a way that it's available to teams that might have a very limited budget to those that might have you know, advanced building management system with advanced submeters and things of that sort. Um, so you could simply report to your occupants on monthly utility bills, just on a monthly basis. Here's our energy use. This is sort of what's going on in our building. Or if you have these submeters, this is what this system is doing and this is how it's affecting the overall energy use. And maybe it's on a you know, 15 minute interval. So it ranges anywhere from monthly data to as you know, granular as you can get. Um, so that's sort of the first major component of this credit. And the other one, um, which I'm sort of excited to talk about, is sort of the occupant empowerment or creating an engagement program to enable your occupants to sort of perform those energy efficient actions. And within that occupant engagement program or the sort of empowerment part um, are, I guess, three major components and then at the last is sort of the performance goals. But within that occupant engagement program, we're asking teams that provide education to your occupants. Um, and this is clearly linked to consumption feedback because they'll get information about what the energy use of the building is using, but also about where the largest impacts are. It's not you know, enough to just say, this is our you know, BTU per square foot. But hey, this is an area where, where you can have the largest impact on affecting our overall building energy use. Um, so after sort of that is given to the occupants, and we also would like to see that it's updated on sort of a seasonally or you know, different information will be provided based on the season. Um, and then moving along in sort of the components, we have the empowerment section of what actions can the occupant take to actually improve the performance of the building. So what can they take at their desk or what can they take in the sort of common areas of turning lights off or setting schedules on your computer um, and things like that. And of course, they'll vary based on the building types, um, the size of your you know, organization and what you kind of have installed. Um, Lauren will talk a little bit um, in a few slides later about what we're kind of doing at the USGBC office 
Um, and we've sort of, you know, been playing around with this. We have a lot of um, occupancy sensors, so a lot of the lights turn off automatically. So what can we do when everything is already sort of, there's so many sensors, so many things that we have no control on. Um, but I'll let her sort of discuss those issues, but of course there's different aspects of different project types. Uh, and the last component of this sort of engagement program that we're asking teams to do is have some sort of feedback mechanism to the management. So if you notice something is wrong, make sure there's something in place that can allow the occupant to notify someone if a, you know, a faucet is leaking or a light isn't turning off. You know, we, we believe that that's you know, a critical part of this engagement program that you, know, uh, you see signs everywhere on trains, you know, see something, say something. It's kind of that same sort of mentality of make sure there's a system in place that an occupant can sort of be comfortable or have easy access to let someone know that something is wrong. Um, and sort of last, but definitely not least, and I think this is kind of you know, the crux of the entire program, is setting goals. And we really want to sort of see when a project team comes through this is, what are your goals of this program and how do those relate to sort of the overall sustainability agenda, agenda of your building? Or maybe even how does that fit into your overall agen sustainability agenda of your organization? Um, you know, I, I don't think you need to necessarily limit to just your building, but how does your building factor into your overall corporate sustainability goals or something like that? Um, and, you know, the nice thing about the pilot credit, we're not awarding based on if you met your performance goals or not. It's really that we want to see that you have those goals in place. And then when you report to us with feedback, you say, here are our goals, here's how we did, here's how we think we could improve next time, or something like that. So the nice thing about the pilot credit, it's flexible enough that we're not holding you to what your goals are. It's just that you have them in place and you're able to assess after you've implemented your program. And this slide is quickly just, you know, a few technologies and strategies that we have on the website of what could you possibly use, say, for the consumption feedback portion, you know, technologies um, to display the energy performance information, whether it's a dashboard or some sort of user interface that has more granular data, something like that, or, and then also sort of the empowerment section, the social networking. I think, you know, a lot of these present presentations we've seen today is sort of the, you know, strength and playing on social norms and what your neighbor is doing or what the person sitting in the office next to you is doing. Um, and also, you know, online forums, having places where you could have a discussion thread of, oh, hey, what's the best way to, you know, save energy here? And people just, you know, have replies or maybe it's something they're doing at home. Hey, I found that this was successful. Maybe we can do this at the office. And of course, gaming structures, you know, competitions. Um, there's a lot of energy competitions going on. So these are just brief you know, technology and strategies we sort of suggested, um, and we're continually looking to add to these um, through the feedback from you know, people here and through the feedback we get from project teams. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lauren so she can sort of talk about her action plan from last year and what she has <laughs> done since then. Um, so before I start on this, I wanted to thank Karen. Um, she participated in some of our uh, planning out the requirements and the intent of our pilot credit, as well as uh, Chris Hammer, who I don't think could make it, and Lindsay Baker um, from Google. Um, so they, they really influenced us with all of their research and uh, different styles on addressing occupant behavior and their effect on energy consumption. So. Um, we started with them, but it's open to all of you, as Lonnie said. I mean, we can change this um, and really make it something that works, and then eventually it can be a part of the LEAD program and not just a pilot. Um, so last year I was here, um, and I was, I've been struggling with USGBCs not testing things on ourselves. Um, we put requirements out there, and we want everyone to do them, and we want to certify those for everybody else. But I thought, well, why do we put these requirements out there and we've never tested them on ourselves? Let's actually see what it means to go through something we're requiring. Um, so my action plan uh, was for USGBC to demonstrate um, that we can have a positive impact or rather reduce energy consumption um, by having our own behavior change program in the office. Um, and we started it. I'm not going to say we've completed it. It's actually a very nice trial and tribulation story uh, to what we've done. Uh, we have created a program, um, and we have written it down, and we have submitted it um, to our leadership. Now, we didn't wait to submit it before we started doing work. Um, we were lucky enough to receive a call um, from the folks at Think Eco um, who create the modlets, and you'll hear all about that t tomorrow. 
two, two minutes? Oh, God, OK. So, <laughs> so you hear all about the modelets tomorrow, so I won't spend too much time on them. But um, they've provided us with this technology uh, to monitor our plug, plug load consumption. So we started using some of their initial technology, which turned out to have needed an update. Um, so we had to update all of our modelets provided by ThinkEco. Uh, and uh, so we've gone through a couple iterations. Uh, before CBB last year, uh, I was given the challenge of taking our current occupant satisfaction survey and changing that into something that was more tangible to our built environment and to our uh, property managers, building owners. Um, this survey was getting out of control. Everybody wanted to put a question in the survey, and it was going to be 20 pages long, much longer than it even could be today, and I pulled it out of the 2012 draft. And I said, well, let's try to create a different credit that's going to have a larger impact, not frustrate occupants, because they answered 30 questions and nothing's changed. Not frustrate owners, because they can't effectively distribute and, and achieve the feedback and then implement any changes. Um, so we we've, we've started the work. And I'm looking at it here, but it's up here. Um, so we started the work before CBB last year. I was able to come up with the personal action plan. And then serendipitously, Lonnie came along. And we put it all into place. Um, we are now measuring the common area coffee machines with the modlets provided by Think Eco. We want to have a baseline by the end of, let's say, this week so that we can put them on a timer. Um, our coffee machines peak like, whoa, at night. Um, they are reheating water all night. And we have, you can only see what, we have four there. We have two more upstairs. Um, and we want to put them on a timer so that in the middle of the night, they're not running. This is a very tiny, very focused, and I think focus, get something done, then move <laughs> to the next step. That's what we're doing here. Um, and hopefully, we'll be able to apply that to a lot of the other plug loads at USGBC um, and see some energy reductions um, in an already <laughs> high-performing office space with 28 submeters not counting the modelets. Um, we're out of time now. Yeah, that's OK. <laughs> um, for Q&A, basically, I just pl plug in to the pilot credit and engage with us um, and help us make it better. Um, if you have projects that can use it, that's the only way we're going to get the feedback we need to make it better. Great. <laughs>